Between the 12 universes God of Destructions, it's been constantly debated on which God of Destruction is actually the strongest and where the other Gods of Destruction rank beneath them. And while most fans would agree that Beerus or potentially Quetella sit at the top of that list, that doesn't necessarily answer where the other Gods of Destruction are in terms of the power chain. However, today I'll be sharing my opinion on why I think that while Quetella and Beerus are the top two Gods of Destruction, that doesn't necessarily mean that the other gods of destruction are that far behind in terms of raw power, and why all 12 gods of destruction could be far closer in power than you might actually think. First, we should address the evidence that Beerus is the strongest god of destruction out of the other 12 universes, as well as some points that might cause speculation. First off, we have the statement from Goku Black in the manga that references Universe 7's God of Destruction Beerus being the most troublesome God of Destruction towards his Zero Mortals plan. This shows that even from Zamasu's perspective, Beerus may very well be far more dangerous than the other Gods of Destruction. However, we have no real reason to believe that Zamasu knows how strong Beerus even is, or any of the other Gods of Destruction for that matter. As from what we know, Beerus and the other Gods of destruction may have never gone all out or even shown their true powers until the tournament of power exhibition match which is obviously held after Zamasu is erased by Zeno. However, it is possible that just like Jiren is a mortal rumored to be stronger than his own god of destruction, Beerus could also potentially be rumored in the same way to be the strongest destroyer in the multiverse amongst the gods. But this is never stated in the manga or the anime and would just be pure speculation to create a reason why Zamasu would know how strong Beerus actually is. But another instance that I would like to address is when Beerus defeats Vegeta just before the Tournament of Power, and he states that Vegeta can make a good God of Destruction candidate in another universe, as a lot of people interpret this as Belmont being far weaker than Beerus, since Vegeta is relative to Topo in power, with this Vegeta level Topo being in line to replace Belmont. However, strength was never a requirement to become a god of destruction in the first place, nor does the god of destruction have to be the strongest fighter in the universe. This is proven on two different occasions, with the first being when Vegeta first begins training with Whis, as Whis offers to train Vegeta on the condition that Vegeta becomes the next god of destruction, despite Goku obviously being far stronger than Vegeta at this current point in the series. And it is also proven again when Topo is selected as the next god of destruction candidate for his universe, despite Topo being nowhere near Jiren's level of raw power and combat abilities. So even though Beerus states that Vegeta can make a good God of Destruction candidate in another universe, this doesn't necessarily mean that the other Gods of Destruction are far weaker than Beerus. It just means that Vegeta could likely be an acceptable candidate for the other Gods of Destruction's criteria for a suitable successor. And in fact, Beerus may be a God of Destruction who just bases a worthy candidate off his strength unlike Belmont, as later in the more recent Dragon Ball Super chapters, when Beerus speaks of Goku eventually surpassing him, he states that he'll nominate Goku as his God of Destruction candidate once that time eventually comes. However, he told Vegeta in the Tournament of Power that he would likely make a good God of Destruction candidate in another universe. So unlike Belmont, who is willing to pick a mortal who isn't necessarily the strongest in his universe, and is even weaker than himself, Himself to take his spot, Beerus's criteria most likely requires the mortal to be stronger than himself before he will initiate them as his successor. And finally, we can look at Beerus' performance in his battle with the other 11 gods of destruction. I already made a video where I recapped this entire battle on the channel for this very purpose, however there are a few important things that I would like to mention in this video. First, it is a common misconception that Beerus was targeted by the other 11 gods of destruction due to him being the strongest, when in fact in the manga the only reason they were ever stated to target Beerus was because he had fallen asleep during a hide and seek match with Zeno in the past, causing Zeno to become angry and nearly erase all 12 universes. And at that current moment, Beerus had accidentally revealed that he was the one responsible for the tournament of power, which angered the other gods of destruction 
destruction, as they were completely oblivious to the fact that without Goku initiating the tournament, their universes would have been erased without them even being given a fighting chance. And moving on to the actual battle, upon Quetella asking the Grand Priest what the rules for the tournament a power exhibition match would be, the Grand Priest tells the Gods of Destruction that the only rule is that they must give their best performance, or they would face being erased by Zeno himself. So we can remove the argument that Beerus and the other Gods of Destruction were not displaying their true power. Now here's where things get interesting. Towards the end of the Tournament of Powers exhibition match, we see that Belmont is blasted out of the sky by Licker, where he then proceeds to play dead for the rest of the tournament. And we also see that Arak and Jin engage in their own beam clash, as Champa finishes off Sidra, Moscow is also shown holding Licker in one arm, and blasting Hillies with an eye beam in the other, as Beerus is shown finishing off Rumshi in one panel, and Quetella is shown finishing off Iwan in the other. That means in an all-out battle, Sidra, Heelys, Licker, Belmod, Rumshi, and Iwan's defeats can all be accounted for, with Jin, Moscow, Arak, and Champa's defeat never being shown in a manga panel. At the end of the tournament, although Beerus and Quetella are the last two standing, they're shown to be heavily damaged and out of breath and extremely exhausted, and Beerus and Quetella would use their final blow against each other to determine which god of destruction was truly the strongest. This is extremely important, as if Beerus or even Quetella are so much stronger than the other gods of destruction, how did they get this beat up from the remaining four gods of destruction that we never see get defeated in the manga? We see that Beerus beats up Rumshi and Quetella beats up Iwan, however even if Beerus and Quetella also defeated Jin, Iraq, Moscow, and Champa, look at how damaged and worn out those other gods of destruction were from their other encounters. And we still don't know if Iwan and Rumshi she themselves defeated some of those other four gods of destruction before fighting Beerus and Quetella. If Beerus was truly leagues above the other gods of destruction, let alone Quetella himself, which he is clearly shown to be relative to, they would not have sustained that much damage from only defeating one or potentially four or five heavily injured and exhausted gods of destruction. And a good example of this is how even after being healed, Goku and Vegeta were one shot by Black Frieza in their strongest forms, because Black Frieza was so undeniably stronger than Goku and Vegeta that there was no way that Goku and Vegeta were going to injure Frieza. Or even another example is when Gohan unlocks his Super Saiyan 2 transformation and swiftly deals with multiple full-powered Cell Juniors and even Cell himself. However, Beerus and Quetella becoming this injured by fighting Gods of Destruction who are already exhausted from other battles, with Champa himself one of the unaccounted for God to destruction that Beerus could have potentially beaten, even states himself that it had been decades since he last trained. So Beerus and Quetella's performance does not give off the same dominating vibes that Black Frieza did with Goku and Vegeta, or even that Super Saiyan 2 Gohan did with Cell and the Cell Juniors, or even with Super Saiyan Broly against Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta and Golden Frieza. Although there is definitely a clear hierarchy amongst the gods' powers, it is not appear to be as one-sided as some people will have you believe. I'm not saying that Beerus and Quetella aren't the strongest gods of destruction, as I believe that the fact that they were the last two gods of destruction standing is a narrative decision to depict them as such. I am simply saying that the other gods of destruction are not that far behind in power, and it is very likely to be a similar case to where Jiren's power was stated to not be that much greater than Goku and Vegeta's during the Tournament of Power, and that in fact Jiren was just able to utilize his power and his movements more efficiently than the Saiyans. And we even see how if two fighters are using the same amount of power, the more efficient fighter who is able to take control of their body movements can still dodge the other fighter as we see through Master Roshi vs Jiren. Which looks a lot like how Beerus dodged the other gods of destruction in his own battle before getting caught, and the battle with Beerus and the other gods and him dodging five gods of destruction was likely just another way of planning the seed for Goku to understand how to utilize his power powers efficiently and unlock Ultra Instinct in his battle later in the manga against Jiren.